with the Twitter girly say, hey besties, hey, hi, hello, welcome to, what? My name is Jess. My name is Jess. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. We're in my kitchen. Um, this is starting off differently. We're drinking. Because it's been a week, okay? Last, I'm, it's Monday when I'm recording this, Monday night. Last week was a week. The weekend got worse. Literally ants invaded my pantry and got into my lemon Oreos. You're actually balanced on all the shit that is currently not in my pantry because I had to take it all out. Have not had the energy to put it back in. Have not seen any ants, but still the audacity to come from my lemon Oreos. Um, yeah, just been not good. And today, Meh city, went to get my hair done, thought it was cute, step outside, the humidity said, bitch, what? And now I'm just looking regular schmegular, and I'm mad about it. So I'm gonna make myself a little cocktail, and then we're gonna be fucking petty about some books, okay? So I am doing this absolute raspberry vodka. This is not sponsored. Uh, with a raspberry lemonade crystal light. Literally, this is my my pantry right now. But let's go upstairs and let's get petty. Okay, we're upstairs. We're beveraging. We're putting on our lip chap. Anyway. Like I said, it's been a week, all seven days into today, so now eight days. It's been a trial, and I had a different plan for the video that you're watching today, but it took a turn. Okay, I also was inspired, so I was watching Mayana's video the other week where she was reading one star reviews while tipsy, which also gonna do that, love that idea. Um, I'll link it below. And then also, I was watching Elle's video. It's so funny. Nothing against you, Elle. But she was talking about books in a tag. And she mentioned this book that I'm so sick of hearing about. <laughs> Everyone loves this book. But every time I hear about it, I get mad. And it made me think of books like that. So there are books that I am like, mm, I'm never going to read that just because it's definitely not my thing. I know it's not my thing. Other books, I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll get to it, but I'm not in a rush. And then there's books where I'm like, I do not want to read that. And I have petty ass reasons. Some, I don't. Some, they may be simple, but some have really pe petty reasons. After watching this video, you're gonna be like, Jessica, are you serious? You're not gonna read that book because of that? Yes, okay? P, E, T, P, give me a P. Give me a T, you wanna give me a P. Give me a, wait, give me a, <laughs> wait. <laughs> Give me a P, give me a E, give me a T, T, Y, I'm petty all the time. That's me. That's me. Petty Roosevelt, as my friend would say. So I'm going to tell you about these books. It's, they're mostly very popular books. Every time I hear about them, it's like another notch, another slash in the I do not want to read this book list. Um, I don't even know if I'm making sense. I just started drinking this, I promise, but it's been a long day, so bear with me. Anyway, this is for fun. Don't take offense. These are your favorite books. I'm not saying I'm never going to read them, but they are at the bottom of my list because certain reasons make it so. So strap in. If you don't have a beverage, you should get one and cackle along with me. This is meant to be fun. Don't get your feelings hurt. Wait. Before we get into the video, though, I would like to thank Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Now, I've talked about Surfshark. I've talked about Surfshark before. They're a VPN, a virtual private network, one I personally use and have used since I moved abroad to Sicily. If you don't know, yes, I am from the United States, but I currently live in Sicily. So that means being here that all of my stuff changed. So my Netflix is Italian, Amazon Prime, I can't watch everything there. HBO Max, it don't work here. Hulu, who is she? And so when I first got here, I was like, I need to watch my shows. 
and I found Surfshark as a VPN and now I am very happy and grateful that I get to work with them. And so Surfshark, like I said, a VPN, my major thing for it honestly was to watch TV shows because it changes, like, you know, it does all the technical stuff so that it's showing that your IP address is registering in the United States. So I can have HBO Max and watch The Nanny or I can have Hulu and watch Handmaid's Tale. But it also does other stuff like security and keeping your your information safe, your email, especially if you're out on a public internet, um, you know, public free Wi-Fi. It's amazing. It's cheap. You can get one account and use it on multiple devices. So everybody in your house can use it on their phones and tablets and TVs and all of that good stuff. And then if you use my code, which is my last name, Owens, O-W-E-N-S, you can get 83% off in three months free. So what are you waiting for? It's an amazing deal. It'll be linked down below. Again, it's 83% off, three months free with my code, Owens, O-W-E-N-S, so you can keep your stuff safe and watch good television. Also, if you're in the United States, it also works the reverse. Maybe you want to watch something on UK Netflix, okay? It's worth it. Get yourself a VPN. Check out Surfshark. Thank you for sponsoring this video, but let's get into the tea. Okay. So I'm going to start with the book that Elle talks about in her video. Again, Elle, this is nothing against you. I'm glad you enjoyed this book. I can't stand hearing about this fucking book. And these first two may really make people mad because they're memoirs. I know that's rude, but I said this is petty. So the first one is Educated by Tara Westover. It has a lot of freaking, this one has over a million ratings on Goodreads at 4.46. <sighs> this one came out a couple years ago. Okay, it came out in 2018 and I have not stopped hearing about it since then. Again, it's someone's memoir, this white lady and she grew up like in this, this wacky family who didn't believe in like conventional things. I think they were all homeschooled. They were super religious. It led to a lot of issues and you know trials and tribulations for the family i'm sure i'm sure that's valid that's fine but i remember a friend of mine read this book and she was like oh she's too liberally using the n-word and i was like oh no ma'am oh no ma'am so i have forever put it on my shit list i don't want to read it everyone's just like oh my god it's so amazing she's just been through so much and like i'm happy that it touched you in that way i'm happy that it like let you into her life but i don't want to go there and is it just for that reason alone yeah that's it i don't want to read it and i said it i don't care the second memoir oh y'all can come for my ass but i do not care the second memoir is another super popular one this one has just under 1 million views has 933,395 <laughs> reviews on Goodreads 4.28 and it's The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. Now this one I actually started reading. I had always heard amazing things about this memoir and I bought it on a trip or something and I started reading it and I was like I know this is your memoir but are you lying? Okay hold on hear me out. So one of the memories that she's talking about was when she's like two or three. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I just don't believe that you have this vivid memory when you were two or three. Cause it's something like she was like trying to make hot dogs or something and she like burned herself on the stove. And I'm like, what, one, no you weren't. And even if you were, you don't remember that. And so after that I kept reading and I just was like, sis, are you? I felt like she was embellishing and that's rude. That's rude of me because that is her story. But I just couldn't believe. I just could not continue so I DNF'd it. And every time I hear someone talk about that on their favorite memoirs or amazing nonfiction, I, I literally am like, and that is so rude, okay? I'm sorry, Jeanette. I don't know her. I don't know her life. I wish her well, but I'm just like, I'm suspect. I'm suspect on some aspects of that memoir. That's all I'm saying. It, I was not falling for it. The next one on my list is Middle Game by Shauna McGuire. Now, this was more, before I had read anything by Shauna McGuire, I already was like, once this came out, don't love the cover, like really don't. Then I read the, the children going through the doors, um, you know, those books. What are they called? 
Every Haunted Doorway, those books. And I was like, wow, maybe I should read Middle Game. But then I'll hear someone talk about it and remember why I didn't want to read it. One, the cover is hideous. Two, the main characters are named Roger and Dodger. No, I can't. <laughs> I cannot. No, no, Roger and Dodger? I think they're twins, but still, no. It couldn't be Roger and Randy. Randall and Ralph, Roger and Dodger. I cannot, I cannot abide. I refuse, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. No, Shannon, no, we can't do it. We cannot. I mean, maybe one day, but I'm forever gonna hate those names. What was she thinking? The next is a booktube fave, and that is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This one is basically because the lack of mixed, reviews that I've heard on this book are suspect. I always hear, oh my god, I love it. It's my favorite series. It's amazing. It's top-notch fate, fantasy, card and jude. Oh my god. And I'm like, y'all are lying. Y'all are lying to me. I know you are because I would read it and I would be disappointed. I know I would be disappointed. So I'm not going to do that to myself. Y'all will not play me again. I mean, y'all probably will in the future. Because sometimes I do listen to y'all and give in, but I am not going to budge on this one. No, I'm not. Not going to read it. The next one is A Simple Reason, Circe by Madeline Miller. I used to own this book, but I bought it before I read The Song of Achilles. Obviously, if you watch my other video that was popular books that I hate, which were ones I actually read, The Song of Achilles bored me to tears. And so I shan't fall for a beautiful cover and let Miss Madeline put me to sleep. No ma'am. No sorry Bob. I shall not waste that time so I'm not going to be reading Cersei. I am so happy right now that I don't like those books because there was a recent, I don't know who it was, Illumicrate maybe, Fairy Loot, came out with these beautiful editions and I was like well thank you Lord Jesus. Those are not for me. Those are not for my spirit because those books read like a better version of a textbook but that's still, it's still a textbook aka night night when I read them. So no. Love it for y'all though. Ooh, on another episode of Y'all Won't Trick Me Again is House of Earth and Blood by Sarah Janet Mass. Um, for the longest time I thought this book was called Crescent City because that is bigger on the book than House of Earth and Blood. Or wait, is House of Earth and Blood the name of the series and the first book is called Crescent City? Or is the name of the series Crescent City in the first title book First book title is House of Earth and Blood. Anyway, I don't know. I don't own it. I'm not going to read it. Purely because it is like 800 pages. No. No, no, no. I suffered through A Court of Silver Flames. Sarah Janet needs an editor. A new editor that will actually put the book on the chopping block. I will not sit through 800 pages of something for aspects I may like. I've heard it has every supernatural creature under the sun. There's a, 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 Brand, a Brandon, a Bryce, a Ralph, somebody that's basically Aelin and Rowan, it sounds like, or Feyre and Rhysan, but in this urban setting. Uh, no. I shan't be fooled and I know some of you want me to read it. Y'all want me to suffer just so I can review it for you. And while I understand, I too enjoy rant reviews. I don't have the time. At least right now, I will never say never, but no. I shan't be fooled right now. I cannot. I have to read Dune. So far, this has mainly been the whites, you know? But the next one is, uh... The next one is our good sis, Nettie Akorafor. I'm sorry. I did read Binti and I did read Akata Witch by her. I did not love either one. And there's other works by Nettie Akorafor, like Remote Control, and there's other books in the Binti trilogy. Um, there's other books that she has written that I hear great things about. But every time someone talks about her, I think about when I followed her on Twitter and how she got on my nerves. Again, I said this was gonna be petty, but she would just, I know she's a smart woman, brilliant woman, I hear her ideas, her stories are so unique and well thought out and I love that for her, I love it for you, but 
she to me would just be a little rude a little stank on twitter and i would i'd be like why you had to reply like that like i don't know i don't follow her anymore but that has stuck with me and i remember telling my friend i was like is it bad i don't want to read her books because she's like i i mean i feel the same way and i was like i have been you know it's i mean maybe one day i'll give her another try like I said, I heard great things about remote control, but when I when I hear about her, when I see him, I'm like, it's gonna be a no for me, Nettie. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. This is so good. I know BookTube and Book Talk love this book, but From Blooded Ash by Miss Jennifer L. Armentrout is a big no for me no 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 from what it sounds like the story sounds like it should be 400 pages shorter and that's my main reason i'm not doing it it just sounds like it could be messy dramatic fun but it's too long i cannot and it's the start of a series i just don't have the time i don't have the energy with little poppy and and whoever the man is who loves her and stuff and i've just heard too much about the pacing and seeing the length of it to know all this wasn't necessary and it could have just been this so I shan't I will not step into those waters y'all can keep it I love it for you but I am not going to be reading that book I know again people would love me to read it love to hear my opinion on it but no 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 it's just like Den of Vipers. This really wasn't on this list because I was I'm kind of interested in reading that one just because I hear that it's just a lot of questionable acts of sex, lots of body parts, lots of lots of things. But why is it like 600 pages? No. No. Uh, it by Stephen King. This is pretty basic. Again, it's too damn long. I've heard about the weird ass gross ass scene at the end. And honestly, Stevie B, you know, he be tweeting some dumb shit too. I don't follow him, but I be seeing some of his takes where he really think he said something. And it's like, Stevie, please, please shut up. Just donate some money and be quiet. Like, I do have one book of his on my shelf, I think. I have Pet Cemetery, which I kind of want to read at some point. Not in any hurry. But it no i used to kind of want to read it because i like that new like big white and red edition but no 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 so y'all can keep that i didn't even watch the new movie i don't have time servant and dove serpent servant and dove serpent and dove by shelby Mahern. Mahern by shelby no again another one where i've heard both sides and it just sounds too messy like something i just don't want to get into and then i heard even less positive things about the second one but i remember when serpent and dub first came out and that was everywhere and i liked the cover so i was kind of intrigued but then i kept hearing just about the premise of old boy who hates witches marrying a witch or something like that and i was like but why this sounds like it's going to upset me and then no so i don't really have a good reason besides no i don't want to read it <gasps> look at this i'm so mad the humidity had to do me like this she was cute for like two minutes okay a little life by hanya yana gihara why is there a grown man crying on the cover why Everyone reads this book and they do a vlog where they're crying the whole time. Like, I don't know, I destroyed my hair in the light and it broke me down. I don't know, I was crying my entire life. Why? That's literally the only reason people read it is to be miserable. And while I know that sometimes it feels good to cry, I can just watch Steel Magnolias for that. Okay? When I need to cry, I can put in uh, The Prince of Egypt. I can put in Steel Magnolias. I could watch Lean on Me. I could watch The Temptations movie. There's so many more better things I could do with my time if I want to cry. I'm not. This is 720 pages of sadness, heartbreak, 
trauma. That's all it is I've heard is the entire thing is trauma after trauma after trauma after trauma. And after reading Ace of Spades, which was only 400 something pages of basically nothing but traumatic shit happening, I'm good. I'm really good. I really do not need to spend 800 pages almost being miserable because the author thought it'd be fun to write a story about people being miserable. No. No. And there's a grown man crying on the cover. I hate it here. Let me tell you something. Stephanie Meyer will not get any more points from me. I will not read Midnight Sun. I will not be reading any other iteration of the original Twilight books retold in Edward's perspective. No. I don't care if the book was in Renesmee's perspective. Every time I think about Renesmee, I think of that ugly ass baby from the movies. No. I honestly was shooketh with how many people read Midnight Sun when it came out. It's from Edward's perspective. Like, I don't care. He was creepy from Bella's perspective. I really didn't want to be in his head. And then I heard things. I think it was Ashley who read it. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm really good. And then I feel like I said, I saw something that said she was continuing, like she was going to write. I don't know if she was going to do more like um, in a, the same books in a different perspective or she was like continuing the series or something. I don't know. Any actually anything from her, I don't want. I don't want nothing from her. Um, yeah, no, no, Stephanie. I need her to do better. I need her to... Uh, you know, give money to the people's cultures that she appropriated and I need her to not. You know, like Twilight, we all loved, well, I don't wanna say we all, I did love Twilight at first, okay? And then with age, I looked back and said, wow, terrible. Um, and so, but it seems like Miss Stephanie hasn't done that evolving that we have as readers. You know, we can look back on it and be like, okay, nostalgia, but woof the issues, the toxic relationship here. But Miss Stephanie's like, oh no, this is good. Let me keep writing this for the children's. Um, no. Yeah, no girl, you won't get, you know. I mean, she's fine, right? She's a rich lady. She'll need my money and she won't get it. Okay, I'm almost at the end of my list. So I have one last stop by Casey McQuiston. This is just, Y'all really, y'all got on my goddamn nerves with red, white, and royal blue. On my nerves, you still do. And then I tried to read it, and I was bored to tears. But y'all like, oh my god, no. And so once I see people talking about this one, and then there's like a third one that I've already seen people like getting obsessing about on Twitter, and I'm like, all of you cannot be trusted. So, and then I've kind of heard about the plot of one last stop and I'm like, oh, no, thank you, no, thank you, no, thank you. Nothing to do with like, you know, the controversies around the books and Casey McQuiston. Surely to do with y'all. I don't want it. No part of it. This last honorable mention is for Leanna. I hope, Leanna, that you are here. Because <laughs> I had to put this on the list. Now this book I do own and I actually do plan to read, but I'm not any hur in any hurry to read it for two reasons. So one, the third book is not out. Don't know when it's gonna be out, could never be out. Two, every time I hear somebody talk about this damn book, it's Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I just am like, cause I always hear it like, it's so amazing, the prose, and the, it's the best. And, and I'm always like, is it? Is it, is it though? Is it though? I don't know, something in me, like I have no, I don't know Patty. I don't know Patrick like that. I don't have anything against him except, you know, he seems to be following George R.R. Martin's stuff and not finishing his series, which you know he doesn't, authors don't owe us anything. It's fine. It's fine. Don't put out the last book. I don't know Patty like that, you know? Do what you do, homie. But every time I hear the book described, I just am like, it just gives me a little, I will read it eventually. If he finishes, if he publishes, not says a date, if it is published, there's a physical copy of the third book and he says that's it, the trilogy, it's done, I will read The Name of the Wind. Until then, no. No. But that's it. That's it on my list right now. There's probably more. Those are the ones I could think of on the fly that I don't want to uh, read 
for you know various petty ass reasons and there's probably more you know there's probably an author I'll stop stop following on Twitter and add to, to this list and then if you see me reading of these any of these books in the future mind your business because I said that it didn't mean I never would read them they're just low on my list okay very low on my list so that was it I was, I have fun I still have more beverage to beverage to beverage to be beverage to drink drink to drink I still got more drink to drink so I'm gonna do that um I need to edit this video because it needs to go up tomorrow but I just felt like you know little just being petty and having fun so I hope you all have fun and had some laughs in this video that's what it was all about and if you have any books that I didn't mention that you have just a random ass petty ass reason you don't want to read please tell me would love to cackle with you in the comments again thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video Owens O-W-E-N-S will save you 83 percent off of your subscription and uh three months free so check the link out down below check out my description ways to support my channel and before we go we always have to say thank you to my patrons thank you so much for supporting me and nigel and so of course shout out to baby's besties danielle katie bobby jen Kristen, leo kate terry emily jesse janine sarah pepper shannon kirsten elizabetta amber heidi maria and serena and to the nigel lavandre stands Maya, Rosie, Ava, Claire, Carrie, Tyrell, Demery, Rainy, and Celine. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your support. So I hope y'all are staying blessed, hydrated, sunscreen, and moisturized. And I hope you're doing better than me. <laughs> but uh, give this video a thumbs up. Think about subscribing. I appreciate you all so much. But I will see you in my next one. Bye. Thank you.